Falmouth Community Television's coverage of town meeting is sponsored by the following corporate underwriters. Welcome to the Falmouth Chamber of Commerce. The Falmouth Chamber is dedicated to working on behalf of our members to make Falmouth a better place to live, work, and conduct business. We are committed to developing the economic, cultural, educational, and civic interests of our community and welcome the support from all organizations to achieve our combined goals. Whether you call Falmouth home, are a summer resident, or a visitor, we hope you take advantage of all that the Chamber has to offer. Carlson Printing for all your printing needs. 508-548-7303 or toll free at 1-800-696-7303. Our email address is carlsonprinting at aol.com. Carlson Printing for all your printing needs. Hosting services for FCTV.org are provided by Meganet Communications. Meganet offers a wide array of internet services, including Mega Backup Cloud Service, Server Colocation, T1, Fiber, Metro Ethernet, as well as telephone services such as hosted PBX and digital voice. Their number one goal is to keep your communications network up and running and allow you to focus on growing your business. 877-634-2638 or Meganet.net. Additional funding and support provided by the following corporate sponsors. Barrett Plumbing and Heating offers expert plumbing, heating, and air conditioning services to all our residential and commercial customers on Cape Cod and surrounding area. We are a full-service plumbing specialist offering professional workmanship to suit your budget. Whatever your heating or plumbing need, you can always count on a job that's done right. Dogs and Hogs, family-owned and operated for over five years. Our Slow Smoke Barbecue is available for dining, pickup, or catering. Now featuring our homemade barbecue sauce. We also serve beer and wine, have gluten-free options, and lobster rolls. RJ's Variety and Liquor, family owned and operated for 15 years. We have a variety of beer, wine, and liquor. Local frozen stuffed quahogs, local frozen pizza snacks, and more. RJ's Variety and Liquor, 174 Sandwich Road, Tea Ticket. The attorneys at Oppenheim and Nickerson LLP have provided legal services in Falmouth for over 36 years. We advocate for our clients and work to provide quality representation in the areas of business and corporate law, real estate law, estate planning, and estate administration. 508-548-8255. We at Falmouth Fish believe there is nothing better than a fresh piece of fish direct from the waters of Cape Cod in New England. Nothing beats waking up at 4 a.m to search out the highest quality seafood from the best fishermen in the world. Seven Stars Academy, offering martial arts and Tai Chi. Training at Seven Stars Academy can transform your life. It's amazing to see the positive impact it has on our students. Classes for adults and children of all ages. Confidence, not conflict, at Seven Stars Academy of Martial Arts. Hamilton Tree and Landscaping has been proudly serving Falmouth and the Upper Cape since 1978. Located on Route 151, we're available for all landscaping and tree concerns. Appreciating your property is our motto as we continue to keep your tree and landscaping needs our top priority. At a, a Paving, we believe in providing customers with quality products supported by excellent service. We provide commercial and residential seal coating, asphalt paving, and repair services for Cape Cod and Southeastern Mass. a, &A Paving, 508 540-4944. Calfee Insurance, offering insurance policies for your car, home, business, life, and disability. Calfee cares about all your insurance needs. 508-540-2601 and online at calfeeinsurance.com. 
Thomas J. Bunker and Jeffrey E. Reither are BSS Design, providing land surveying and civil engineering in Bauman since 1987. Licensed and fully insured, they're located on Catherine Lee Bates Road, and their phone number is 540-8805. Wild Harbor General Store, located in historic North Falmouth Village, providing quality goods and services for 170 years. Continuing to make history with our support of FCTV's coverage of Falmouth Town Meeting. Liam McGuire's Irish Pub. With a newly renovated dining room, it's what an Irish pub should be. Main Street, downtown Falmouth. Bayside Kitchen and Bath at 419 Palmer Avenue in Falmouth, where design and installation professionals work closely with homeowners, architects, and builders, offering a full range of cabinetry, countertops, and faucets. Bayside Kitchen and Bath, returning you to beautiful spaces. Eastman's has been Falmouth's hardware store since 1913. With a newly added retail space providing kitchen accessory and gourmet foods, our friendly staff is available to assist you with your hardware and kitchen needs. 508-540-0407. Carpet Barn, Carpet One Home Showcase, a local family-owned business offering all your premier carpet and flooring needs. They also feature tile and vinyl floors, area rugs, window treatments, and kitchen and bathroom cabinetry serving you at four convenient locations. Cavosa Disposal is proud to provide trash removal, recycling, and composting to local businesses in Falmouth and surrounding communities. Cavosa Disposal would like to thank its customers in Falmouth. Cavosa Disposal, 508-563-5070. Family owned since 1919, at Puritan Cape Cod you'll find the latest in men's and women's clothing as well as ski and tennis equipment and much more. Located on Main Street, Falmouth and in Chatham, Mashpee and Hyannis. Puritan Cape Cod, 199 Main Street, Falmouth, and online at PuritanCapeCod.com. FCTV is also supported by the following businesses and organizations. Nobska Lighthouse and Maritime Museum, friendsofnobska.org. Falmouth EDIC Economic Development and Industrial Corporation, 508-548-7440. Partners Technology Voice and Data Solutions, 781-930-5000. Wakoit Congregational Church, 508-548-5269. Annie Hartcool, Global Real Estate Advisor, Sotheby's International Realty, 508-868-0664. St. Elizabeth Seton Church, 508-563-7770. Vincent Associates, 548-6500. Turning Point Dance Studio presents the Sea Captain's Nutcracker at Tilden Art Center in Barnstable. Soar's Flower Garden Nursery, 508-548-5288. M. Duffany Builders, 508-540-3625. Cranberry Nail Spa, 508-495-9999. Neighborhood Falmouth, 508-564-7543. Danny's Barbershop, 508-548-6013. Carl F. Cavosa Excavating, 508-563-5530. Paul's Precision Automotive Repair, 464 Main Street, 508-548-3164. David Rogers Electric, 
Residential, Commercial, Industrial, TV Studio, and Motion Picture, 508-564-7507. Murray and McDonald's Insurance, 800-800-8990. The Davy Tree Expert Company, 508-548-2662. Andy's Barbershop, in the Falmouth Plaza. Chapman Colin Gleason, 508-540-4172. Hanush Jewelers, Downtown Falmouth, 508-548-9107. Mahoney's Garden Center, 508-548-4842. The Cape Cod Five at 508-457-5252, capecod5.com. The Cooperative Bank of Cape Cod, 508-495-5010. Martha's Vineyard Savings Bank, 508-627-4266. Vips of Falmouth Volunteers in Public Schools, 508-548-1621. Cape Cod Cleaning, 508-563-7622. Steve's Pizzeria and More, 508-457-9454. FCTV also thanks Roach Brothers, Stop and Shop, and Windfall Market. the slide for the quorum. Town meeting members, please come forward, back to your seats so we can establish a quorum for the second half of the town meeting. Well, you're gonna, you're gonna have to make a motion. Okay, let's go folks, come on forward. I don't wanna be here four nights, so let's go. I'm gonna recognize the 
Chairman of the Board of Selectmen to make an announcement relative to the Senior Center project. Madam Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. On behalf of the Board of Selectmen, the Senior Center Building Committee, and town staff, I wanted to let everyone know that there um, has been an award of the project. The contract will be GVW Inc. So good progress, and thank you for everyone who worked very diligently on that. Okay, we have a quorum side up, so all town meeting members present, please press 1A for the establishment of a quorum. I almost forgot to vote. I only get to vote in the quorum call. <laughs> By a counted kind of vote of 178, we have a quorum, and I call the annual town meeting back into session. Article 22, Madam Chairman, for the main motion. Article 22, recommend as printed with the following change. Strike the words, quote, by standing vote, end quote, from the last line in paragraph numbered one on page 21 of your warrant. Okay, that's the main motion as printed, but striking the words or standing vote. Mr. Donald. Thank you. Uh, Malcolm Donald, uh, Precinct 6. Um, I'm the petitioner of this article. Um, this deals with electronic voting uh, here in town meeting. Uh, you're striking, there, I'm showing you uh, the, the bystanding vote that's in your uh, warrant book. Um, it's the third line from the uh, bottom of the article. Okay, uh, what Article 22 does? Uh, it makes every uh, electronic vote uh, a roll call vote. In other words, town meeting members' uh, detail vote will be saved. Why do we need it? because we need accountability for the electorate to know town meeting members' uh, attendance and voting record. Under current rules, all right, we're gonna talk about, I'd like to talk about attendance right now. Under current rules, attendance is only captured at sign-in. After that, uh, town meeting members are free to uh, free to leave at any time with no effect uh, on their attendance record. Under current rules, currently there's no ass assurance a town meeting member is uh, still present to vote on articles that are contested uh, in, with uh, an electronic vote. And the attendance figures only reflect, uh, obviously, uh, those, who uh, those who signed in at the beginning of the meeting and uh, not those who are present for electronic votes on any contested issues in which there are electronic votes. So uh, the data that's published in the enterprise is suspect somewhat. Okay, let's take a look at an example. Uh, I'm, we'd like to, I'd like to, you to consider April uh, town meeting um, night two. Uh, the sign-in attendance for town meeting was 177. Towards the end of the night, uh, on Article 36, we had an electronic vote. 
and there were 134 votes in favor and 25 opposed. Therefore, we can deduce that there were 159 town meeting members remaining. In other words, 134 plus 25 equals 159. Now, okay, let the petitioner continue, but people can't abstain and they don't come up in the record, that's correct. So, uh, 18 town meeting mem members apparently had left, which is, a pro which is more than 10% of those that signed in at the beginning of the meeting. And it's pretty much, vi I, I had thought about putting in a slide at town meeting, you can see it's rather, it's a lot more sparse than the beginning of the meeting, so. Um, with Article 2 attendance, uh, voting detail is saved. Uh, people will know, uh, you know, that whether uh, any particular town meeting member has voted on an electronic voting um, vote and a contested article, and we've solved the problem. Okay, on to voting, uh, which is the second uh, main issue that this article uh, addresses. Uh, let, let's talk about how things were in the old days before we had electronic voting. We had stand, we had a standing vote, and uh, Andy Dufresne uh, would count the members who were standing for the, for the in favor, and then count the members uh, in his section that were opposed. Uh, people uh, watching on television had a uh, some sort of an inkling about well. They could see some of the town meeting members and who voted for and who voted against. Um, or you could go back on the video uh, that's on the FCTV's website and, and see for yourself and look at it again and you, get, you can see some of the, uh, some of the town meeting members so, uh, and how they voted. It wasn't ideal, but it was a lot better than what we have now. We, uh, when we have uh, an electronic vote, people are seated and they vote silently with their clickers. Nobody gets to see how anybody votes. The town on the electronic vote then, uh, how it works is after uh, all the votes are in, the town clerk only saves the totals uh, of the vote count. In other words, how many uh, votes were for and how many votes were against. The detail is then, um, the voting details of every town meeting member, which the computer has, are then purged. So all you know, and you look in the minutes and you can see how many yeas and how many nays, and I showed you that on that, atten uh, that attendance example. So, with electronic voting, we have less accountability and less transparency. It's worse than what we had before we had the electronic votes. When we had the standing vote, at least we had some idea of who's voting for what and how they're voting. Okay, so with Article 22, uh, town meetings gonna com would commit to good govern governance and transparency. Uh, because we're going to be saving, we would save uh, the, the voting detail. And as a result, the electorate would be better informed about how to vote for a, a town meeting member, whether they, they like the way they vote, did they, sh did they stay for an entire town meeting, or you know, what kind of job are they doing? And th uh, the results of the voting would be available on the website and for everybody to see. So to summarize, Article 22 is going to make every electronic vote a, ro a roll call vote. Now there is a provision in there uh, that provides for an override should a secret vote come up, and we had a, uh, we had a, an instance with a, uh, with a, with my walking buddy, uh, the chief of police, when um, he wanted to uh, work. Um, uh, to, to extend his career another five years, and people were uncomfortable uh, having a roll call vote and having their vote um, uh, uh, registered. 
there is a provision in there that we can vote prior to taking the electronic vote and dump the, uh, and, and vote to dump the detail if that's what uh, two-thirds of the uh, town meeting wants to do. So now the electorate is going to know how town meeting members, their each particular town meeting member, whether their attendance record and their voting record. Now what the article does not do, it does not alter the number of electronic votes. So we're still going to have the same number of electronic votes when the, when the moderator uh, can't determine um, the, the yeas from the, who has the, who has the majority of the yeas from the nays and calls for an electronic vote, will have an electronic vote. Or if uh, seven, seven people want to have an electronic vote, they can stand up and request that. And then the second big thing is it does not slow down town meeting whatsoever. It's just the only thing, uh, yeah, I mean, it doesn't involve, really involve town meeting at all. All it is is a um, computer operator that is running the machine. So, without Article 22, how is the electorate going to know how to vote for a town meeting member? And they won't, because they don't know the attendance record or the voting record. A, a vote, a yes vote for Article 22 is a vote for accountability and transparency and transparency. So doesn't it make sense to vote yes on this article? Thank you very much. Okay, before we open up discussion, I just want to tell me members to know that the Rules Committee uh, did meet uh, with the petitioner, uh, discussed the article, um, actually made the recommendation that that bystanding vote language be removed um, just to make it com compatible with other provisions. Um, and then took a tie vote of three in favor and three opposed, and I abstained as chair, which I always do with the Rules Committee, um, so that I can be impartial at town meeting to, to run the article on behalf of, of the meeting. So uh, the Rules Committee did not have a definitive uh, recommendation, yes or no. It was a 3-3 tie uh, at the Rules Committee. So discussion is now open on Article 22. Mr. Keefe. Brian Keefe, Precinct 4, Rules and Procedures Committee, uh, Electronic Voting Subcommittee. So uh, where do I start? Um, so as the moderator just pointed out, the Rules and Procedures Committee did meet, discuss, and listen to Mr. Donald's presentation. Uh, unfortunately, I was not able to attend, as were a couple of other members of the Rules and Procedures Committee meeting. So there were a couple of votes that were not represented that, uh, that may have broken that tie, myself being one of them. So not being present for that debate, my vote doesn't count, but um, I would have voted in opposition during that meeting uh, had I been present. Uh, the next piece is, uh, I just want to remind this body that the Electronic Voting Subcommittee spent a significant amount of time, um, almost a total of two years, in terms of researching our options, researching uh, the, the charter changes, the bylaw changes that needed to be implemented in order to support the system. Uh, we through a lot of creativity and conversation at those different scenarios to make sure that they were all covered. Um, as Mr. Donald did represent that there was one particular vote that was, that was sensitive in nature, that was a scenario that the committee hadn't considered. Um, and at, when we listened to this at the previous town meeting, I spoke in opposition to it at that point uh, because I felt as though this body wasn't yet ready to consider uh, we didn't have the experience, we didn't have the, uh, the different scenarios run through the system often enough to fully understand the implications. Uh, I think we are still there, and I think that is evidenced by a couple of uh, issues that we just had. They were non-technical in nature, uh, so working with uh, the uh, presenters and the, those that were having an issue. The two issues that we have, there was a misunderstanding in terms of the color coding on the screen. So as a reminder, your name will always appear in black until a vote is received. At that point, your name flips to green. Uh, that had to be recovered with, with a couple of different users. Um, in addition, we also, it, it, was, an, it was an honest mistake. The, the wrong slide was presented. Only a quorum vote was, was available where we needed a, a, a binary decision. So 
I think that it's, um, we remain, remain premature to, to consider this motion at this time. Um, that being said, I am generally opposed to flipping, uh, flipping this electronic vote to a full roll call vote at every opportunity. Th th there are a few different reasons for that. Number one, that creates a data stream as a data analyst. Uh, I can say that this creates an analytics opportunity for those that wish to, to target individuals within this body uh, to sway their vote. Uh, the, that's a little bit easier than it sounds, uh, though it's above uh, a, a certain, certain threshold. So I do want to make sure that we are very thoughtful as we consider this vote, uh, because if, if down the road we want to reverse that, it's, it's again quite a bit of work to reverse that. And we're a volunteer body at the end of the day. Yes, we are representative. We represent our, our precincts. Um, however, we do have precincts that are underrepresented. So now, with that 100% that transparency, and I'm not opposed to transparency, don't misinterpret that statement, but once we move to a 100% transparency model, the, the opportunity or the encouragement for volunteers to step forward and get involved, I think that undermines that, that encouragement. It, it questions, do I want to get involved and constantly be questioned because I voted against Article X or Article Y? So I just, I encourage this body to be thoughtful and, uh, and be considerate. And again, I, I vote in opposition to this article. Thank you very much. Mr. Hunt. Uh, Carter Hunt, Precinct 7. Uh, I'd like to answer Mr. Donald's question. Anybody in my precinct that wants to know how I vote can ask me. I don't need to answer questions from people from precinct one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine. Only precinct seven. So this is a little bit over the top as far as I'm concerned. It is a volunteer body. I agree with what was just the last speaker. There are many occasions where a vote, an anonymous vote, is a way to vote. There's nothing wrong with that. And we should continue that. I oppose this article. Mr. Neto. Joe Neto, Precinct 9, I'd like to explain why I voted against this, and basically against this electronic voting. I've been that way since day one, and nothing's ever going to change my mind about it. First and foremost, I sp spoke before you as a member of the Rules Committee when we presented this to you, and someone stood up and said, is our, asked the question, is our vote going to be recorded? And the answer to that question was no. I'm not going to vote for something and go against what I told you just two years ago. Those that want this said, oh, Joe, it's, we've been using it. It's working out fine. Well, it doesn't work out that fine as what we just saw tonight. It's technology. Does your cell phone work all the time? Does your computer never crash? But what really bothers me and why I will never be for this is because we had the most basic, simple system. A person stood up for what they believed in. What is more transparent than that? And the previous speaker just took the words where I was going to ask you, I've mentioned to you again, the people from Precinct 9 know how I vote. They have no problem with that. I do realize I'm one of the ones that gets up to the microphone. Fine. I'm going to say what I feel. I would write, after tonight, I'd like to write an article to do away with this. Really, honestly. This is the second time now We've had something like this in front of us at town meeting because one article three years ago, and I'm one of the counters, passed by one vote. And somebody said they want a recount. And the moderator 
said, no, there's no reason for the recount. Because one, the recount was saying those of us that counted didn't count right. Or two, and this was what would probably happen, once some people see how the vote goes, they get on the winning side. So transparency, what's more transparent than you as a town meeting member standing up and showing how you were voted? You can't beat that, thank you. Okay, Mr. Dinah. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'm in favor of this article. I had an opportunity to sit with Mr. McDonald at a precinct meeting. Uh, I came from a town with open town meeting that would fill a town meeting hall with special interests during special articles. This town meeting and town meeting members are very, very knowledgeable. I think uh, accountability is the key word here. Plus enhancements, there's gonna be more enhancements to the system going down the road. If you're elected as the dog catcher, selectman, Board of Health, a town meeting member, you're elected by a body of people and you represent them. Anybody can ask at any time how you voted and you should be able to give an answer. But I think uh, accountability and recording accountability, you shouldn't be afraid. As far as being targeted, fine. I think the House of Representatives, everything you do is recorded. And you should be recorded so you can go back to your constituents and show them what you did and why you did it. So I think this is a great enhancement. Uh, I think it's something that's coming and something that's going to have additional enhancements probably down the road. We should use it. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Schneider. Barb Schneider, Precinct 4. Um, I'm against this also. As a former English teacher and journalist, I sat here trying to wordsmith how I was going to say this. And I have to say that listening to you suggest that people replay tapes and try to see who's voting how is, gives me the creeps. And I, I am being honest here because it's hard enough to get people to fill all the slots in all the precincts to run for town meeting. I think when people go to the polls and vote for me, they vote because they know I do my homework, they know I care about this town, and they know I care about Precinct 4. And that's why they're voting for me, not to keep tally on every vote that I take, but to know if I'm voting, I'm doing it thoughtfully and because I care about the big picture. And I'm really sad that we've come to this level of skepticism. I understand that there are people in this room, and we just talked about it at the break, it is very difficult at 1025 at night to have very technical discussions and to have everybody awake and thoughtful and making good decisions. That's something I hope that will be discussed because we've gotten to be a very technical town meeting, not like we used to be just deciding about lifeguard salaries and so on. So I'm hoping that people will realize that this is not the, the answer. The answer is that we all come here doing the best we can and that's what matters, not this accountability where people can keep targeting who's voting how. That's not what this is about. Okay, Ms. Lichtenstein, got you on the list. Leslie Lichtenstein, Precinct 8. I'm ambivalent about this, but if we did vote this, I believe that it should have a yes, no, and an abstain which is what they do at the State House, I believe. Uh, no, we don't, we don't have that on our You mind. don't have? No, and in, in town meetings in Massachusetts, an abstention has no legal weight. It's those present and voting uh, d determine okay. all questions. Okay, I, I'm ambivalent, I don't feel either way. I just feel that there are a number of people who might feel pressured to vote maybe against their conscience and against the conscience of the people in their precincts if they knew it was being recorded. That's just my feeling. And Ms. Lichtenstein, the, the Rules Committee, just technically, the Rules Committee could have that discussion to ask that the uh, number three be activated in a slide, uh, and so that option could be made available. It will just have no legal weight. When you do a two-thirds vote, it's those present and voting, so those, if you were to use number three, they don't count in the two-thirds, and they don't count in the majority, okay? 
they, they would have no legal weight in the decision being made, but you could, as, yeah, as, as you were present in the room, Mr. Donald mentioned attendance, so they could say, hey, I'm here, I just didn't vote, but it doesn't count. Whereas an abstention, if, if there's an abstention in some cases, uh, in other bodies, the abstention counts towards the, the final decision, not in town meeting. Okay, uh, let's see, Mr. Walker. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, I am gonna vote yes on this. I think it's a good idea. I'm from Precinct 3, Grant Walker. Uh, when I'm here, I, I think of the whole town. I Actually, I don't think that, maybe I should, but I don't think of my precinct so specifically. Um, I think my responsibility is to the whole town, even though I'm elected by my precinct. And I agree with the idea of transparency and accountability. Uh, I think of myself at some small level here as one of the officials of this town's government by virtue of being a town meeting representative. And therefore, I feel that it is my responsibility to be accountable and transparent. So I'm voting in favor. Okay, Mr. Latimer. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Richard Latimer, Precinct 1. I'm kind of on the fence on this one. Uh, I don't like the idea that anyone can just ask for an electronic vote. I think that is, is unnecessary. I do feel that when an electronic vote is called by the moderator, it's on something that is so close that there is almost an evenly divided opinion or it's a very close, whether it's a two-thirds. It's, it's, those are usually very important articles uh, by definition. And I, I, I notice on this device I have here, it has my name on it. And I know that when I click this, my name gets recorded on a public record. And it bothers me that that public record of information that the public has a right to know just gets discarded. So I, I do believe that when we make these, when we do make these recorded votes, that those should remain on the record and that anybody should be able to look that up, just simply because it bothers me that stuff that is available, records that are available to the public, are, are just being thrown away. I just think that's wrong. Thank you. Okay, so Mr. Latimer, in essence, um, that's what this proposal does. The language that uh, the petitioner added about setting the method of voting prior to the vote is already parliamentary law. It's in town meeting time. And so it, it doesn't need to be in here. You already can request the meeting to set the method of voting prior to the vote commencing. My hierarchy is always, I do the voice vote. If I de can't determine it, I go to the machine. Uh, or if I do determine it and you all question me, then we go to the machine. Um, so that, just so you know, that, that sentence is already available uh, under town meeting time. It's just the petitioner added it to the motion. Yeah. Okay. My, my main point is that the reason that I am supporting this article is because I don't like the, the fact that what's happening is that a public record is being destroyed, essentially. Some uh, information that the public has the right to know Maybe not everybody wants to know it, but anybody in the public that does want to know how any one of us voted should have the right to get that information. Uh, and I just think that's wrong that, that it's being destroyed. That's all. Can you just pass the mic up to Ms. Thorold, please? Right, right in front. In front. Yeah. Um, Andrea Thorold, Precinct 6. Um, the two pieces of this article um, are talking a bit about um, attendance and our voting records. Um, I, I spent a long time running for town meeting, um, 13 years before I became part of this body, and one of the things I looked at very carefully was um, attendance. So I do agree that that is a key point of it, and I think there are various ways that we could be able to um, 
check attendance not only at the beginning of the meeting, but when we come back for a second quorum. I do want full representation from my precinct. Um, the other piece, though, is about voting record. And the, in the presentation, there was a lot of talk about contested questions. And I'm for transparency, and I would be happy for people to see my full voting record, but we're not always unanimous in our decisions. There are many times where there's some portion of us voting yes or no on all sorts of different articles. And all we're going to be giving by going through this type of procedure are those that are too close to hear by voice vote and they're those necessarily contested. And I think that's probably a lot of what people are reacting to is the cherry picking of the voting record. So if there was a way to do a complete voting record, I think that that would give good information to our constituents. Um, but as this is, I think we're just getting a piece of the puzzle. Okay, Mr. Duffner. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'm Michael Duffney, Precinct 6. And for transparency, I had to be in Boston late this afternoon. I walked in at 8.20, so I wasn't part of the quorum. But to, if, if we were to vote this, people would think that I didn't care about the first three questions because I didn't vote. Um, I always, I've been like you a lot, been here a long time, and I felt very strongly that standing up and, and voicing the way that I feel about something was the way to do it. I think that the electronic voting just helps to speed the process along and makes the vote more accurate. And so I would refer it back to the Rules Committee to try to find some happy medium here. Uh, I certainly don't have a problem with my attendance being, being shown, but I, uh, again, I always liked being able to stand up and not sit, sit in my seat and do the vote. So I would, uh, I would vote against this. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Toby. Linda Toby, Precinct 4. There's something that I miss now that we do this, we've been doing this vote electronically. I miss when we vote to look around and say, oh, you know, I didn't know she was gonna think that way, or oh, he, she's vote, he's thinking, thinks the same way I do. Because when I leave here, um, I was always taught, you don't talk about certain subjects. And one is who you vote for. And so I just kind of leave it here, unless somebody from the neighborhood wants to talk about an, a subject. But I really miss looking around and seeing the, you know, the different groups and the different neighborhoods. Um, I, think that's a, I think that's a big piece of this. Um, and also, uh, for the new item that came up about being more carefully um, scrutinized, um, I feel that uh, we have a, people that voted for us to become town meeting members, they trust us and they, want, and they think we're gonna do a good job, which we do. Um, and I feel that if we scrutinize too much, uh, I feel that we're losing that, that little piece of trust that's handed to us when we become town meeting members. Um, I also have a question, Mr. Moderator. I'm wondering, I didn't pay attention to this before, but are we renting these units or did we buy them? We purchased them. So if we were to decide this isn't going to work for us, what happens? We could sell them, we could rent them. Okay. We can leave them in a closet. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Was it a large amount we purchased them for? No, I think it was 15000 was the appropriation, but it didn't cost all of that, right? Okay. All right. The authorization was fifteen, but... All right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ms. Keefe? Sorry, Melissa Keith, Precinct 4. So I've written down a few things um, that have sort of been said already, but to uh, piggyback on Mrs. Toby's, the people that elect us trust us. Um, I'd like to think that I'm a trustworthy person. They, I've been elected uh, twice now into town meeting, which I am very proud of, and I take it very seriously. I do my homework. I pay attention throughout the year, not just the few nights that we're here twice a year. Um, I, I don't like the idea of having the data trail and being targeted. 
I play another role in this town, and every move I make is um, watched and recorded, and I am completely and 100% transparent. And if anyone has any question, whether it's a precinct question, everyone is more than happy, like I am more than happy to welcome questions, how I voted, why I voted that way. But the thought of somebody or a, a group targeting people, good people that want to volunteer their time to the town, which as Barbara Schneider uh, mentioned, that we're having a tough enough time filling precinct seats, is a little, um, it's not very kind and it's not, it, it would happen. So Mr. Donald, I'm not really sure why Maybe that's not fair, but anyway, we're volunteers. We're doing the best we can. Mr. Duffany was late for legitimate reasons. People are late. People have to leave early. Sometimes life happens and they can't be here and that's okay. Thank you. Mr. Young. Mr. Moderator, fellow town meeting members, I was a member in East Falmouth for about seven years and I've been from North Falmouth for about 25 years and I've enjoyed it thoroughly. And I don't appreciate uh, the politicizing of this uh, town meeting representative that I enjoy being. We already have an ability to for a roll call vote, I believe under the present system. If you get 20 people to ask for it, we can do that. Why don't we leave it the way it is? If he wants to have a roll call vote, raise his hand and get 20 me members to agree to it. Otherwise, let's just keep it the way it is. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Uh, Mr. Clark, Dr. Clark. When you're on the list. Peter Clark, Precinct 1. Uh, one comment uh, I would make is that I'm not in favor of this. I would ask the Rules Committee to consider having our cake and eating it too. When we need this kind of vote, we stand up and click it and then sit down. And the no's stand up and click it and sit down. And it wouldn't take any more time, and people who want to inspect the video can inspect the video. Um, my second thought about this is, um, my, my second thought about this is that, that I'm saddened that fear is so much of the conversation. There's the suspicion that we may be sneaking out there was a fear that we're sneaking out. And there's the fear that we're going to get targeted. It's just too bad that's that where we are. I, I would love it to think that if someone saw me stand up and click no, they could come and find me and say, Peter, I want to have a good conversation with you. I want to talk to you about this. That's positive. The targeting is not positive. Thank you. OK, Ms. Whitehead. Lynn Whitehead, Precinct 1. We already discussed this for, uh, for a couple of years. We decided we'd do the electronic voting. I think we should go with it, and I don't like the, the, this feeling of an attitude, and I can't even put my finger on it, but it doesn't feel good. I think we should stick to what we decided, we voted on it, and we should continue that, and that's it. Okay, Mr. Dufresne. Adrian Dufresne, Precinct 2. For 48 years, I've never been afraid to stand up, put my hand up, or speak my mind on this floor, town meeting. It's the greatest form of government going. As I get up in years, I'm still not afraid to express myself. I run my business. I don't care what people say. I vote in the best interest of the town of Falmouth, not my not so much just my precinct. I've had the honor and the privilege of, of representing the people of the town of Falmouth. However this vote goes tonight, I'm not gonna be affected that much longer. But I, I ask you to really consider, is it necessary? It all started, as, as uh, Mr. Neto said, two or three years ago by one vote, which was questioned and the moderator made the decision that the uh, recount was not necessary. That's the man that runs town meeting. 
You people run town meeting. If we start relying on all these electronics that are coming out, I'm going to tell you right now, this form of government will disappear. And I urge you to vote this thing down. It's not necessary, and I think it's already caused too many complications. Uh, thank you for listening to me, and uh, again, uh, I've had the privilege of standing here many times, never afraid to put my hand up, and never afraid to stand up and be recognized. And that's what we're here for. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Keith. Brian Keefe, Precinct 4. Uh, as a sign of good faith, uh, as I'd like to think that I might be leading the opposition for this article, but as a sign of good faith, I would like to put forward a motion and fix the method of voting, voting as a roll call vote for this, for this article. Do I have supporters? I need... Okay, he's asking to set the method of voting for this article as a recorded roll call vote. All those in favor of utilizing a recorded roll call vote when we vote on this article, please stand. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yep, we've got twenty. Okay. Thank so, you. So, <laughs> Greg, when we do this, it's your maiden voyage on a recorded roll call vote. <laughs> we're going to do this one, and then we're going to retain the record of the uh, of the main motion. Yes. Yeah. Address some of these points that have been made. Uh, I can put you on the list. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yep. Let me do. Uh, I've got one more here, uh, Mr. Dinan. Mr. Dinan, you had your hand up. I'm a little taken back, Bill Dynan, Precinct 5, New Silver Beach. I'm a little taken back by the response. Most of the town meeting members here are, I'd say, over 40 years old. And uh, technology's come a long way, and we're, we're all challenged with it. I hate to speak against Andy since he cuts my hair and has a, a knife to my throat every so often. <laughs> Maybe I ought to have Billy do the next. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we shouldn't. We should not vote against this article for fear. We're, we're all American citizens. We're elected by the people of the town within the precinct. We re represent the precinct and the whole town. Out of fear, we should not vote against this article. We're elected and we should do our duty. We're volunteers of the church. We volunteer as the church. You're an elected official of the town, whether you like it or not. If you, if you don't want to be elected and you're afraid that somebody's going to come after you because you vote against something, well, then this is a problem there, and it can be addressed. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Donald? Okay. Um, I'd like to address some issues here that have been raised. Uh, first of all, uh, the technical problems with, with the electronic voting system are, are beyond the scope of this article. They're, they're really, it's irrelevant to what I'm asking for. Um, if you vote this article tonight, and, and it turns out you don't like it, it's as easy as my petition, uh, getting a petition that I put together to change it. So, I mean, it's not a big deal. People ask me how I voted. Well, how many people could you stand asking you to vote? How you voted. I mean, 10, 20. How many people live in your precinct? What if 100 people wanted to know how you voted? You wouldn't do any, be doing anything else. Well, this is going to just let everybody know how you voted. All right. Um, you know, Mr. Um, uh, somebody raised the issue, how do you know how you vote? Uh, uh, the people know how you vote. Well, you can get up, it's possible to get up and speak one way and vote another. It's possible to stand and say yay and hit the number two and vote no. Why do we have, why does FCTV put the videos on, the, uh, on their website? What's the point? Why are they wasting their time? Well, the public wants to know. Maybe they, were, they had an engagement this evening and they can't hear this discussion 
and they want to come back and they want to hear about who wants, um, who wants accountability and who doesn't. They want to know. Uh, someone over here said, everybody knows how I vote. Well, yeah, uh, there's some very prominent people here. And yeah, everybody knows how you vote. But there's a lot of people sitting around, a lot of uh, town meeting members sitting around you that don't get up and say anything. So how do we know how they vote? He's got his four minutes. Let him finish up, and then we're going to vote on it. All right. <clears throat> Before I ca became a town meeting member, when I went into the voting booth, most of the people other than Chuck Eastman and Bob Antonucci, I, I didn't know who the heck my, my t precinct, you know, representatives were. I don't, how do I, how did I vote, for, how do I know what, how to vote for them? I mean, but it would be really nice on votes that I was interested, like the planning board, that the planning board is, spends all this time putting together these articles, and I'd like to know who supports the planning board. It would be really nice, and I think I'd vote for uh, precinct members that did vote for the, you know, that's, that's the way I, I'd look at things, and I'd like to know who did. Um, and then as far as, you know, Andy wants, has no problem standing up and, and letting people know how he votes. Well, Andy, you don't stand up anymore because you click the clicker. Nobody sees you standing, and that's the problem. Thanks. Okay, the question will come on the main motion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Well, no, we, we got the slide, that's right. We fixed <laughs> method of voting. So uh, let's activate the vote. All those in favor, signify by pressing 1A. All those opposed, 2B. If you want to stretch your legs, you can stand, but we won't know how you vote. <laughs> By a counted vote of 72 in favor and 117 opposed, the article fails. Article 23, the recommendation is indefinite postponement. Mr. Donald, for a main motion. I move uh, the article as displayed uh, up on the screen and on these handouts. Did anybody not get a handout or an email from, uh, from me? And we have additional copies up here. Okay, Mr. Donald, the changes are substantial, not only in form, but in substance from what was in the warrant. Um, so I need you to read the, the motion, the main motion. I need you to read the main motion so everybody can see it. Okay. Because I notice you don't have just little highlight sections. It's, this is four pages, so. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, to see if the town will vote to amend the general bylaws by inserting the following section regarding the prohibition of expanded polystyrene foam. Article four. The purpose and intent. The production and use of expanded poly uh, polystyrene EPS foam, also known as styrofoam, has significant impacts on the marine and land environment of all coastal communities, including, but
but not limited to contributing to the potential death of marine and terrestrial animals through ingestion, contributing to pollution of the land and coastal environment, clogging storm drain systems, creating a burden to the solid waste collection by acting as a major contaminant in curbside recycling and requiring the use of millions of barrels of non-renewable fossil fuel for manufacture. With the goal of protecting the health of its citizens and the unique natural beauty and irreplaceable natural resources of the town of Falmouth, and given that inexpensive, safe alternatives to expanded polystyrene, EPS foam, are easily obtained, the town will phase out the use of expanded polystyrene foam over a period of six months from the effective date of this bylaw in order to allow time for establish establishments to use their existing inventory and to convert to alternative materials. Definitions. Extended, expanded polystyrene foam shall mean blown polystyrene, styrene that has been expanded or blown using a gaseous blowing agent into a solid form, sometimes called styrofoam, a Dow chemical trademark, which is a thermoplastic petrochemical material utilizing a styrene monor monomer and processed by any number of techniques. Expanded polystyrene EPS foam disposable food service containers shall mean single-use disposable products for serving or transporting food or beverages, including without limitation takeout foods and or leftovers from partially consumed meals prepared by a restaurant and or retail food establishment. This includes, but is not limited to, plates, cups, bowls, trays, and hinged or lidded containers. Food establishments shall mean any operations, including without limitation, restaurants, convenience stores, grocery stores, delicatessens, food trucks, schools, farmers markets, and other public venues that store, prepare, package, serve, vend, or otherwise provide food for human consumption. Any establishment requiring a permit to operate in accordance with the state food code 105 CMR 590.000 at Sequentia shall be considered food, food establishments for the purpose of this bylaw. Retail, es retail establishments shall mean any commercial business facility that sells goods directly to consumers, including, but not limited to, grocery stores, pharmacies, liquor stores, convenience stores, retail stores, and vendors selling clothing, food, personal items, dry cleaning services, theaters, and all other food service establishments. I guess we gotta uh, advance this slide. Um, yeah, here we go. All right. Uh, let me see. Where is pub public venues? Oh, yeah. Okay. Use regulations. Oh, public, public venues. Oh, public venues. Um, and there's a change here. Um, it was pointed out to me, and I feel uh, it's an oversight on my part. Um, uh, we, we're going to strike the word churches and we're going to change make that religious institutions. So, under, in that second line under public venues, make that religious institutions. Public venues shall mean operations including, but not limited to, meeting halls, religious institutions, town offices, the senior center recreation department, library, and Falmouth Public Schools. Use regulations. Expanded polystyrene foam disposable food service containers 
and new polystyrene loose fill packaging shall not be used or sold by food establishments, retail establishments, and or public venues within the town of Falmouth on or after a period of six months from the effective date of this bylaw. Any stock remaining after six months from the effective date of this bylaw shall be accepted for disposal free of charge at the Falmouth Solid Waste Management Facility. This bylaw shall not apply to loose fill polystyrene foam packaging reused from shipments originating outside of Falmouth. I, number two, items in original manufacturer's packaging, and three, styrofoam uh, foam freezer chests. Administration and enforcement. This bylaw may be enforced by any town police officer or agent of the Board of Health through any lawful means in law or in equity including, but not limited to, non-criminal disposition pursuant to GL Chapter 40, Section 21D, which is Massachusetts general law, and the appropriate chapter of the general bylaws of the town of Falmouth. If non-criminal disposition is elected, then any establishment which violates any provision of this bylaw shall be subject to the following penalties. First offense, $50 fine. Second offense, $100 fine. Third offense, $200 fine. Offenses occurring within two years of the date of prior reported offense will be considered as subsequent offenses. Each day or portion thereof shall cons constitute a separate offense. The Board of Health after a hearing conducted in accordance with the procedures set forth in 105 CMR 590.14 and 590.15, again, Massachusetts general law, may suspend or revoke the food service permit for any establishment failing to comply with this bylaw. 191-35, severability. If any provision of this bylaw is declared invalid or unenforceable, the other provisions shall not be affected thereby. The end of the article. Okay, Mr. Donald, uh, your reference in that last paragraph uh, to 105 CMR being a general law, it is not a general law, it's a CMR. Okay. So, so will you All right, strike just that. remove that in parentheses note from your main motion? Yes, I'll remove that note and the previous note on uh, page two. In the bottom. You can, but the previous one is a general law. Okay, well, that was for uh, uh, the, the information of uh, the body. Okay, so we'll remove both of those notes. Okay, that's the main motion. Mr. Donald. Okay, I um, would like to introduce um, Alan Robinson, who will be giving the presentation on this uh, article. Alan? Thank you, Malcolm. And I, I think by you having just read this, you really got all of the points that we wanted to make. Um, that styrofoam is non-biodegradable. It uh, really lasts forever. It may break up. A cup may break up into smaller pieces, but those smaller pieces live on. Uh, they can harm fish, birds, uh, in our oceans. They are a major contaminant within the town recycling stream. They are not recyclable, yet people are putting them into their recyclables on curbside or on Main Street. And that is a problem in this day and age when uh, recycling must really be pristine and only include the appropriate materials in recycling. And there are proven alternatives. I think we saw that downstairs. Uh, those of you who went downstairs for coffee or for, um, or for a piece of cake, uh, those cups were paper. And uh, did they work okay? I think they did. Um, there are alternatives to styrofoam. As Malcolm related from, from the, uh, from the uh, article itself, the 
disposal, the ban is for, dispo is for dispo banning disposable styrofoam food service containers. Thanks, Malcolm. Um, yeah, why don't you continue to do that? Um, styrofoam peanuts. Um, materials can be shipped to us. We're not prohibiting people from outside shipping uh, packages with styrofoam, but we are asking that styrofoam not be sold within Falmouth. Uh, and that the ban will not take place immediately. It'll take place um, six months after the effective date so that businesses have the time to get alternatives, and there are, of course, alternatives. And of course, we concluded some, concluded some photographs of, of, from just a few days ago of two of these items uh, contaminating the, the area near our waterways. This really is a third step uh, in Falmouth in sort of organized approach to reducing plastic litter. The first happened here four years ago when you all those of you who were here four years ago, and I think many of you were, voted to ban plastic bags uh, within the town. Um, the second element was, is initiated this year by the Falmouth Water Stewards and the refill water stations with the messaging to reduce use of single-use plastic bottles uh, and use refillable plastic bottles. Because uh, as many of those bottles, when they're used outside, become litter. Uh, and the third element is one we could take tonight, and that is to vote to ban uh, styrofoam here in Falmouth. We've already covered the revised warrant, uh, and that the revised warrant is focused on polystyrene, uh, only, expanded polystyrene only, not all polystyrene. Uh, the article as developed since the time it was issued in, in, initiated in the warrant, benefited by conversations, by meetings with the Board of Selectmen, uh, the Health Agent, the Board of Health, the Solid Waste Advisory Committee, uh, reviewing the bylaws of other communities, and talking with interested citizens and input from interested citizens. Um, and of course, it, as we said, it bans styrofoam only. Uh, the bylaw does not ban uh, loose fill polystone packaging uh, from packages shipped from outside of Falmouth. Uh, reuse of that same uh, packaging uh, by those of us in Falmouth, uh, original manufacturers packaging uh, in styrofoam fishing, uh, uh, freezer chests. When was the last time uh, you saw single-use plastic bags littering our town. It is remarkable to me, having moved here a year and a half ago uh, from a community that had not, has not banned single-use plastic bags, the difference. When you walk around the roadsides here, we do see, we, I see litter, and we do have a litter problem, but plastic bags are not part of that. We've made a difference in our community, uh, and it shows. Um, we can take the next step um, to reduce litter in town, um, recognizing that there'll still be paper litter. Paper cups are litter, but they, they degrade very quickly. The plastic ones, the styrofoam ones, do not degrade. So we ask that you vote yes on this revised article and really respond to the question, where does change begin and that change could be right here in Falmouth Town Meeting. So thank you, and we hope that you'll vote for the article. Okay, discussion is open on the article. Yeah, Ms. Rhodes. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Ray Rowitz, Precinct 5. Um, I own a store in North Falmouth, and um, we have coffee in a deli, we sell soup, we sell a lot of uh, things that, uh, food that people can take home. This article will not affect me one bit because we use cardboard, or the, the paper cups, we use the sleeves for them, we use uh, containers for the soup that are paper. Um, so 
please vote this article. It, uh, it really makes sense. Thank you. Mr. Stetcher. Bernie Stetcher, Precinct 3. Uh, from what you said before, I got the impression that uh, Nantucket, and is it Dennis, I think, that already have this ban, or am I wrong? So it's not a precedent that we're the first town to do this. It, I just wanted to make sure yeah, of that. Nantucket did it in 1990, 1990. It's, it's been around, it, it, other communities have had it for a while, some yeah. recently, some for a while. Thank you. So. We're just joining the rest. Okay, Mr. Herbst. Up in the front here, if you can stand just so they can see. Yep, thanks. Oh, it's a race. <laughs> I'll place my bets on her next time. <laughs> Ralph Herbst, Precinct 8. Um, there was a slide up there a moment ago it talked about who you consulted with, and I'd like to see whether or not you could put that slide back up there, because under the explanation it says that the board of, of um, selectmen said that you did not consult with the Solid Waste Advisory Committee or the Board of Health. So uh, you said Board of Health twice and Solid Waste Advisory Committee, so there seems to be some, uh, an error in that. The other point is, uh, Mr. Herbst, I'm, I'm being informed by the Board of Selectmen that uh, those meetings occurred after the publication that they hadn't met with them. Thank you for that clarification. I'm sure it makes them feel better, too. Um, I believe that the town of Falmouth either has a, uh, a policy or something that uh, outlaws plastic straws. We've, we've done that already. and um, the Not in Falmouth. But I thought, I th okay, I'm, I, uh, excuse me, I thought that applied to, it applies to me when I go to a uh, restaurant in Falmouth anyway. And then also, um, it's public pressure uh, that, that uh, makes these changes happen. And uh, an example of that would be um, how McDonald's had to get away from uh, uh, using uh, styrofoam and now, and uh, uh, I think um, also, uh, other fast food restaurants have had to switch over to paper when they uh, dispense um, food. And um, it's just, it just makes me proud to be part of a town that would take on uh, something like this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I vote in favor of this. Okay, Mr. Patel. Sir Robert Hill, Precinct 7. I just would like to have a clarification about the freezer chest. Um, I own a 7-Eleven and we sell the coolers, styrofoam coolers, which, you know, in summer, a lot of, you know, a lot of tourists, even the locals, when they go out fishing, they buy the coolers. But that is different than a freezer chest. So does that include in there or not? Yes. Yeah, the, styr the styrofoam coolers are excluded from this article. Okay. Thank you. Need, and if we need to correct the terminology, we're certainly welcome to make that help make that clear. Okay, okay Mr. Smolowitz. Thank you, uh, Ron Smolowitz, Precinct Date. I'm uh, against this article. I understand that plastics in the ocean is a major problem. I've been doing a lot of work with that for several decades. I'm sure there's a lot of people in here uh, that work with the problem of plastics in the ocean. There's no doubt it's a significant problem. But town meeting is not the place to be dealing with this. We could probably spend three hours I mean, I've, sp I've been to two-day workshops talking about this subject to get enough information. And it's, the problem is, what is the reaction with banning styrofoam? Now, 
I just, uh, before I came to the meeting, I just downloaded from the Ocean Conservancy the top 10 plastic waste products. And <coughs> number 10 on the list is foam takeout containers. Uh, the number one is cigarette filters. Um, the problem is, is that if you ban styrofoam takeout containers, there's a good chance they're gonna be replaced with a, another plastic. The, the wrappers, it just, it's, it's not something, you, it's a feel good thing, but the consequences could be a lot worse. The town meeting is not the place to be dealing with this plastics issue. This is, has to be dealt with at a much higher level. It's important for us to let our representatives at the state and at the federal level understand the issue to deal with it. But we're gonna be, what's the next thing? We're gonna have next April, somebody is gonna ban balloons, which are a much bigger problem. Uh, look while we had a coffee break, these plastic stirrers, is that gonna be in next fall's town meeting? These individual service uh, creamers, is that, is that gonna be in the April town meeting? We're gonna have two hour discussions of each, the consequences of that. Town meeting is not the place to be dealing with this type of important issue. Um, I, I, I'm just, uh, I'm concerned that we're, we're gonna be having three and four day meetings. I mean, I'm not, this is too, it's not the place to be doing this. Okay, Mr. Dyer. Mr. Swain, you're on my list, so if you can have a seat. Ron Dyer, Precinct 8. In doing your, doing your research, what did the supermarkets say to you? Um, I guess Mr. We, uh, Donald? We didn't, we, well, in the various conversations we had, we did not go specifically to supermarkets. We did stop, uh, for example, at the, uh, the uh, market in Woods Hole and learn what they're doing. And just like the gentleman who spoke, uh, the gentleman there who spoke first, uh, they, they are not using anything with styrofoam. All of their, their service materials uh, that they're using for food uh, can be, actually theirs can be composted. So the Woods Hole market that you just talked Wait. about is, is a tiny organization. The reason I asked you about supermarkets is that's where a great deal of packaging materials are issued to each one of us, whether that be for meat substances or other capabilities that are packaged in store and then issued to us consumers. Right. So what did they say? And okay. if you didn't do that, what? that's not part of the research that I would expect that you have not done. Okay, what we did do is we um, uh, uh, talked with the Chamber of Commerce and gave them uh, this article with plenty of time to get it out to their membership. Now, I don't know whether the Stop and Shop is a member of the Chamber of Commerce, but the Chamber of Commerce uh, is, a, is a group of all, re pretty much all these retailers in, in town and restaurants, and so, I mean, they had notification of it, so apparently there isn't a problem. Um, and then, uh, let me ask another question then. You just said you went to the Chamber of Commerce. Yes. Did you, how did you do that? Did you go to one of their meetings or did you just hand them a, a set of materials? I, I sent them. Uh, sent so you the, didn't have a meeting with them directly? I sent the executive director uh, this article. So you for didn't his, talk to for them? For his review. So you didn't talk to them and you didn't talk to any one of the ma managers at supermarkets? I, di I did talk okay, with Okay, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're done. Thank you. Ms. Siegel? Ms. Siegel, yes, no, maybe, stand up if you want it. I call the question. Okay, the question comes on closing discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, no. no. Pin the chairs if the ayes have it by a two-thirds majority. And the question will come on the main motion as presented on the slides in red. Okay, you want a roll, recorded roll call vote? 
For closed discussion, we haven't fixed the method of voting. Stand if you want a recorded roll call vote on this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yep, we're just under the, just the 20. So let's do a uh, slide for recorded roll call vote. Okay, all those in favor of the bylaw, press 1A, all those opposed, 2B. I kind of vote 126 in favor and 61 opposed. The article passes. Okay. Uh, article 24, the recommendation of the Board of Selectmen is indefinite postponement. Mr. Donald, for a main motion. And, and do we, do you have your, I understand that there's a main motion different than as printed. Do you have a copy of that for the clerk and I? Uh, Mr. Moderator, um, You know, I submitted uh, this um, article, uh, which I believe is very is a very important um, way of voting for for us. We the really should take a look at it, but there's been really no uh, no support on it, and I'd like to withdraw draw the motion. Okay. At this time, I recognize the chairman of the board of selectmen for a main motion. As recommended. And the recommendation is indefinite postponement. All those in favor of indefinite postponement signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it unanimous, and the article is indefinitely postponed. Article 25. Article 25, planning board for the main motion. Someone from the planning board to make the main motion? Bueller, Bueller. I'm surprised I'm the only one left. I recommend it as printed. As printed, Article 25, this is to vote to amend the official zoning map of the town of Falmouth to extend the Business 3 district. This was a petition article. Mr. Ahmed, presentation. Thank you again, Mr. Moderator. I'm again Bob Ahmed attorney and um, I represent the owner of the property who seeks the extension of the business three zoning to include uh, the entire lot. The um, property is uh, shown on the screen above you. 
Um, I don't know if you can um, point it out, but it, it, it is in your, let's see if this works. No. I think I'm screwing things up. Your warrant book, of course, has a map that shows the uh, property in question. The proposal is to expand the business three district to include all of the two-thirds acre property that's two doors away from the intersection of Old Main Road and County Road in North Falmouth. So we're dealing with an existing business property, business next door, business across the street, and even one of the residentially zoned properties that fronts on County Road and touches this property is the site of uh, a business offices. The total of two-thirds of an acre would allow four residential units, multifamily housing with four units, two-thirds of an acre, six units per acre is allowed by special permit, two-thirds of an acre would allow four. There's an existing house in the front of the property. It's in an historic district. I'd like to keep and rehabilitate that house. So we're talking about a rezoning that would allow three multifamily units in the back of the uh, property. Now, the density of multifamily housing is based on the area of the lot, even if only a portion of the lot is zoned for business. So one could have um, four units on the lot as is, as now, if you could have three of them in the front of the property and one, a single family residence, would be allowed in the back, a total of the four units. That could be done now. By rezoning the entire property to uh, business three, it, it allows more flexibility in the layout of the, uh, the units and probably allows for a, a more appropriate rehabilitation of the uh, historic structure in the front of the property. We have filed with the town manager's office a covenant that's referred to in the planning board's recommendation a covenant that says that if the property is rezoned to business three, the only new use that would be allowed would be residential uh, use. That's been signed, notarized, filed with the uh, town so that it would be recorded at the Registry of Deeds if town meeting passes this article. This is a good site for uh, denser um, residential development. Of course, the density, as it said, would already be allowed on the business portion of the property. But it is uh, close to a village center, close to the bike path, easy access to highways and so on. It's an uh, appropriate use of the property, and I hope that you'll be able to support it. Thank you. Discussion on Article 25. Ms. Galliello. Virginia Baliela, Precinct 5, longtime resident of North Falmouth, and I'm here to speak for many residents in North Falmouth who are very concerned about uh, this proposal. Um, I'm going to make a number of points. If you could first go back to the other slide uh, that was shown originally. I'm going to see if I've got my pointer here. Okay. Um, this uh, map does not accurately represent what, what the situation is in Falmouth, and that's why we've uh, created this context map. Um, there is actually a lot of B3 zoning in North Falmouth, and I'm going to orient you here. Uh, this is the old main road, and it continues on down to Curley Boulevard. Uh, over here, um, there is a bike path, and then ultimately, uh, route 28A. Coming in from this side is Route 151. What you see in red are B3 zones. This is ancient zoning from 1926 when the town first adopted zoning. Uh, they created a strip along various portions of Old Main Road and County Road, which is what is the extension from um, 
from Route 151, where they thought business might occur in the future. The actual uh, businesses that were on Old Main Road at the time in 1926, there were businesses here and there was the fire station down at Wild Harbor Road and Ray Rowitz's country store on the south. But everything else was a house. It was residential. And the, B, the business zoning was in anticipation that there would be business developed in the future. We're now going to fast forward to nearly 100 years later. Those houses are still there. This is a residential road. There is business just at the four corners uh, up here. One house has been converted uh, to a hairdresser uh, and very tastefully. And then the next property north is this number 289 that is now being asked to be rezoned. Uh, down here uh, at Wild Harbor Road, uh, there is the old country store, uh, there is the fire station, the, all of the other structures are residences. In uh, the 1980s, uh, town meeting recognized the historical nature of many sections of it, this town and created strips that preserved the look of those, those villages. There is a historical district, which is not shown in your map, that runs the full extent of, uh, of Old Main Road, this entire stretch that is shown here. The business three zoning is 100 feet deep. It's not very deep. The historical strip is 150 feet deep. So the development on this parcel uh, is really only that hundred, the business section is only that hundred feet in the front uh, of the property. And the map in your, in your warrant booklet somewhat, I, I don't know quite why, exaggerates that 100 foot. This is a deep lot. Uh, it has lots of trees. Uh, it's very, um, it fits with the character of uh, the, the neighborhood. Uh, and I was rather surprised to hear the applicant said that, say that they were going to preserve the house. The house is in very poor condition. It's actually somewhat open to the weather. Uh, it has caution tapes all the way around it. Uh, and there are windows falling and stairs drooping. So <laughs> I very much doubt this house is going to be preserved. It's going to be pulled down. But if you have given them business zoning for the entire lot, then what can be developed there is much more than what will be developed if we leave this, uh, if you leave this parcel as it is. This is a residential road, and we are looking for residential development to the degree that the community uh, has input on it. I want to point out one more thing. Um, we have B3 zoning, where I just pointed, on County Road. We have eight condos going in there. Uh, directly across, this, not directly, but just up here, this section here, that is 10 condos. Uh, there are at least a dozen planned for there. These are all B B3 zoning, and each one has been developed uh, because of the B3 zoning to have just as many condos that, as they possibly could squeeze on. These are not cheap. These are investments. They're running for five hundred to six hundred thousand dollars, and so they they're not helping with the character of of the town. And we, we just do not, we being the community in North Falmouth, are very concerned to see that one parcel after another keeps getting picked off and then overly, overly developed. Um, I think lastly, I would say that there are other parcels down here that are also deep lots. 
And so if you approve this B3 to be this entire lot, sure as shooting, we're gonna have the next time that someone gets too old and dies or downsizes, you'll be seeing some more lots uh, looking that will be asking, well, they did it up there, why can't you do it down here? Um, so we really ask you uh, to help us and not pass this article. Thank you. Ms. Johnson. With the, uh, with the microphone, please. I am Patricia Johnson. I am in. Mr. Swain. Okay, motion to, to commence beyond 11 for this article. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it and we'll continue after 11. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. All right. I'm going to make two uh, essential points. Uh, to begin with, in the hearing process, the planning board did not follow their customary procedures in recommending this article, and this is not fair. I attended the September 27th open meeting when the petition was presented and questioned, and the public was heard, and the hearing was closed. The planning board has had a long established policy that once a hearing is closed, there will be no further comments from the public, whether for or against a proposal. However, in this instant, at the next meeting, when the planning board discussed the petition and reached a decision, they did not follow their policy of not allowing additional input from the public. In this case, they recognized Attorney Clower, who then reinforced his petition. A North Falmouth resident who was opposed to this had left the meeting believing that he would not be recognized. The planning board's action on that was, night was not even handed. Second, I want to indicate why you should vote no on this article. The North Falmouth community should not be stuck with a 95-year-old business strip zone. We suggest that the planning board and the town planner plan and propose zoning changes on Old Main Road and connecting roads as a whole with a big picture and avoid the results of rezoning just one lot at a time. Further, the explanation does not indicate that this is in an historic district and it is in the Rands Canal Coastal Pond Overlay District. If you vote for this article, you will be establishing a precedent that will open the door to similar proposals that will have a negative implant in village centers throughout the town. This is not just about North Falmouth. Please vote no. Okay, Mr. Latimer. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Richard Latimer, Precinct 1. I used to be a delegate from North Falmouth, so I have a fondness for this area. I also used to be a member of the planning board, and I think this is terrible planning. I, I want to point out that I came to Falmouth in 1958 as I was going into high school. My parents and I drove down what was then Route 28, which is now Route 28A. Uh, that was the new highway that bypassed Old Main Road. Before they built Route 28, now 28A, Old Main Road was the way you came into Falmouth back, I guess, in 1926. And then it made sense to have businesses on that road. When Route 28 came in, well, OK, that was the highway, so it still made sense maybe to have some businesses there. And there were businesses. you know, 
pretty good businesses. There was an apothecary, a drugstore, one of the local drugstores that now have, have disappeared from this town where all people go now from the malls to the drugstores. Well, actually, that was a drugstore, and it was a, a center of the, the, the village. It's no longer there. Then what happened was they built what is now Route 28, the dual highway. So Route 28A then became the secondary road. And that is the suitable place for new business development and maybe new business zoning if needed in the North Falmouth area. Uh, route, the old main road is now, what is there on that corner there? Well, there's a yoga shop, okay. There's a bank, which is a convenience, I suppose. There's a very good ice cream shop, the, the, the Holy Cow, which uh, is one of my little uh, minor sins. But uh, it, it is not really a suitable area for business, and it isn't really uh, a business area that would be contributing in any way to the town or to the people of North Falmouth. So I urge everyone to vote against this article. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Finneran. Um, this subject I probably have the least familiarity with, um, so I got a couple of simple questions. Um, can someone explain to me, firstly, why this would not be considered spot zoning? Because it's an extension of the existing zone. Okay. Um, and secondly, um, would this, as um, Mrs. Johnson uh, indicated, would this um, set a precedent and start a cascade, uh, I mean, from all the way down right through West Falmouth? Potentially? <laughs> kind of stinky if you ask me. Mr. Neto? Okay, we've got a motion to move the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it by the two-thirds majority. The question is closed. And the question will now come on the main motion as printed. This requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. No. It's printed the chair that there's a majority of no's, and therefore there is no two-thirds majority, and the meeting will stand adjourned until 7 p.m. tomorrow night. Falmouth Community Television's coverage of town meeting is sponsored by the following corporate underwriters. Welcome to the Falmouth Chamber of Commerce. The Falmouth Chamber is dedicated to working on behalf of our members to make Falmouth a better place to live, work, and conduct business. We are committed to developing the economic, cultural, educational, and civic interests of our community and welcome the support from all organizations to achieve our combined goals. Whether you call Falmouth home, are a summer resident, 
or a visitor, we hope you take advantage of all that the Chamber has to offer. Carlson Printing for all your printing needs. 508-548-7303 or toll free at 1-800-696-7303. Our email address is carlsonprinting at aol.com. Carlson Printing, for all your printing needs. Hosting services for fctv.org are provided by Meganet Communications. Meganet offers a wide array of internet services, including Mega Backup Cloud Service, Server Colocation, T1, Fiber, Metro Ethernet, as well as telephone services such as hosted PBX and digital voice. Their number one goal is to keep your communications network up and running and allow you to focus on growing your business. 877-634-2638 or meganet.net. Additional funding and support provided by the following corporate sponsors. Barrett Plumbing and Heating offers expert plumbing, heating, and air conditioning services to all our residential and commercial customers on Cape Cod and surrounding area. We are a full-service plumbing specialist offering professional workmanship to suit your budget. Whatever your heating or plumbing need, you can always count on a job that's done right. Dogs and Hogs, family-owned and operated for over five years. Our Slow Smoke Barbecue is available for dine-in, pickup, or catering. Now featuring our homemade barbecue sauce. We also serve beer and wine, have gluten-free options, and lobster rolls. RJ's Variety and Liquor, family owned and operated for 15 years. We have a variety of beer, wine, and liquor, local frozen stuffed quahogs, local frozen pizza snacks, and more. RJ's Variety and Liquor, 174 Sandwich Road, Tea Ticket. The attorneys at Oppenheim and Nickerson LLP have provided legal services in Falmouth for over 36 years. We advocate for our clients and work to provide quality representation in the areas of business and corporate law, real estate law, estate planning, and estate administration. 508-548-8255. We at Falmouth Fish believe there is nothing better than a fresh piece of fish direct from the waters of Cape Cod in New England. Nothing beats waking up at 4 a.m to search out the highest quality seafood from the best fishermen in the world. Seven Stars Academy, offering martial arts and Tai Chi. Training at Seven Stars Academy can transform your life. It's amazing to see the positive impact it has on our students. Classes for adults and children of all ages. Confidence, not conflict, at Seven Stars Academy of Martial Arts. Hamilton Tree and Landscaping has been proudly serving Falmouth and the Upper Cape since 1978. Located on Route 151, we're available for all landscaping and tree concerns. Appreciating your property is our motto as we continue to keep your tree and landscaping needs our top priority. At a, a Paving, we believe in providing customers with quality products supported by excellent service. We provide commercial and residential seal coating, asphalt paving, and repair services for Cape Cod and Southeastern Mass. a, &A Paving, 508-540-4944. Calfee Insurance, offering insurance policies for your car, home, business, life, and disability. Calfee cares about all your insurance needs. 508-540-2601 and online at calfeeinsurance.com. Thomas J. Bunker and Jeffrey E. Reither are BSS Design, providing land surveying and civil engineering in Falmouth since 1987. Licensed and fully insured, they're located on Catherine Lee Bates Road, and their phone number is 540-8805. Wild Harbor General Store, located in historic North Falmouth Village, providing quality goods and services for 170 years. Continuing to make history with our support of FCTV's coverage of Falmouth Town Meeting. Liam McGuire's Irish Pub. With a newly renovated dining room, it's what an Irish pub should be. Main Street, downtown Falmouth. Bayside Kitchen and Bath at 419 Palmer Avenue in Falmouth, where design and installation professionals work closely with homeowners, architects, and builders, offering a full range of cabinetry, countertops, and faucets. Bayside Kitchen and Bath, returning you to beautiful spaces. Eastman's has been Falmouth's hardware store since 1913. With a newly added retail space providing kitchen accessory and gourmet foods, 
our friendly staff is available to assist you with your hardware and kitchen needs. 508-540-0407. Carpet Barn, Carpet One Home Showcase, a local family-owned business offering all your premier carpet and flooring needs. They also feature tile and vinyl floors, area rugs, window treatments, and kitchen and bathroom cabinetry, serving you at four convenient locations. Cavosa Disposal is proud to provide trash removal, recycling, and composting to local businesses in Falmouth and surrounding communities. Cavosa Disposal would like to thank its customers in Falmouth. Cavosa Disposal, 508-563-5070. Family owned since 1919. At Puritan Cape Cod, you'll find the latest in men's and women's clothing, as well as ski and tennis equipment and much more. Located on Main Street, Falmouth, and in Chatham, Mashpee, and Hyannis. Puritan Cape Cod, 199 Main Street, Falmouth, and online at PuritanCapeCod.com. FCTV is also supported by the following businesses and organizations. Nobska Lighthouse and Maritime Museum. Friendsofnobska.org. Falmouth EDIC Economic Development and Industrial Corporation, 508-548-7440. Partners Technology Voice and Data Solutions, 781-930-5000. Wacoit Congregational Church, 508-548-5269. Annie Hartcool, Global Real Estate Advisor, Sotheby's International Realty, 508-868-0664. St. Elizabeth Seton Church, 508-563-7770. Vincent Associates, 548-6500. Turning Point Dance Studio presents the Sea Captain's Nutcracker at Tilden Art Center in Barnstable. Soar's Flower Garden Nursery, 508-548-5288. M. Duffany Builders, 508-540-3625. Cranberry Nail Spa, 508-495-9999. Neighborhood Falmouth, 508-564-7543. Danny's Barbershop, 508-548-6013. Carl F. Cavosa Excavating, 508-563-5530. Paul's Precision Automotive Repair, 464 Main Street, 508-548-3164. David Rogers Electric, Residential, Commercial, Industrial, TV Studio and Motion Picture, 508-564-7507. Murray and McDonald's Insurance, 800-800-8990. The Davy Tree Expert Company, 508-548-2662. Andy's Barbershop, in the Falmouth Plaza. Chapman Colin Gleason, 508-540-4172. Hanush Jewelers, Downtown Falmouth, 508-548-9107. Mahoney's Garden Center, 508-548-4842.
the Cape Cod Five at 508-457-5252, capecod5.com. The Cooperative Bank of Cape Cod, 508-495-5010. Martha's Vineyard Savings Bank, 508-627-4266. Vips of Falmouth Volunteers in Public Schools, 508-548-1621. Cape Cod Cleaning, 508-563-7622. Steve's Pizzeria and More, 508-457-9454. FCTV also thanks Roach Brothers, Stop and Shop, and Windfall Market.